The liberation of the city of Mariupol continues. The main part of the Ukrainian forces are located at the Azovstal factory. Long-range Russian aircraft, namely the strategic bombers, joined the operation in the city of Mariupol. They delivered several airstrikes at the Ukrainian positions at the Azovstal factory. A military source from the DPR reported that Fab 500 aerial bombs were used. The recently captured Ukrainian marines gave their assessment to the work of the Russian aviation. The constant airstrikes hastened their mass surrender from the Ilyich factory. Mariupol is the largest DPR city controlled by the Ukrainian military. The military operation has been going on since the start of March. The Ukrainian military presence has been contained to the Azovstal factory and the Primorsky district of the city. The Ukrainian forces invaded the Russian airspace with two attack helicopters with heavy weaponry. They moved at a low altitude and carried out at least six airstrikes on the residential buildings in the village of Klimova from the Klimovsky district in the Bryansk region. As a result of the direct hits, at least six residential buildings on Zarechne and Lenin streets were damaged. Seven people, including one child born in 2020, were injured. The Ukrainian forces also fired from mortars at the Novy Yurkovichi border checkpoint in the Bryansk region. On the territory of that border checkpoint there were more than 30 Ukrainian civilians who were on their way to Russia. The firing position was suppressed by the return fire. Two vehicles of the refugees were damaged. There were no casualties. The checkpoint continues to operate as usual. The Zelensky machine building factory Vizor was attacked by Russian missiles. Workshops for production and repair of anti aircraft missile systems were destroyed. A Ukrainian Mi 8 helicopter, which attacked the Russian village of Klimovo in the Bransk region on 14th of April, was shot down by a Russian S 400 anti aircraft missile system on its way back to the airbase near the village of Gorodnya in the Chernigov region. A Ukrainian Su-27 fighter jet and eight UAVs were shot down near the village of Lozovaya in the Kharkov region. A Ukrainian launcher for tactical missiles Tochkayu and a point of temporary deployment of a Ukrainian nationalist formation, including up to 20 armored vehicles and up to 50 Ukrainian nationalists, were destroyed near the village of Yesenovaya. Ukrainian forces and equipment were destroyed near the villages of Dergachi, Novo Yelizavetovka, Povstanskoye. Warehouses for rockets and artillery and fuel were destroyed in Nukolaev and Parutino. 221 Ukrainian military facilities, including 12 command posts, 176 strongholds and manpower concentration areas were hit, 12 artillery firing positions were suppressed. On 14th of April, the Russian missile cruiser Moskva sank while being towed to a port during a storm, likely due to the damage sustained by an ammo detonation that resulted from a fire. The crew has been evacuated, as it has reported while citing the Russian Minister of Defense. The warship lost stability while being towed to the port of destination due to the damage to the hull received during a fire caused by an ammo detonation. The warship sunk in stormy sea. The sources of the test in the ministry stated, the missile cruiser Moskva was launched in 1979. The main weaponry was the P-1000 Vulcan anti-ship missiles. The cruiser had eight twin launchers capable to launch 16 missiles at once. Sea-based anti-aircraft missile systems S-300 Fort and the anti-aircraft missile systems OSA protected the warship from air attacks. Vladimir Putin stated that Belarus is suitable for the further negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. He added that the start of a direct dialogue with Ukraine was possible only thanks to the personal efforts of Alexander Lukashenko. During a personal meeting with Alexander Lukashenko, Vladimir Putin discussed the formation of a single defense space and the security matters of the Union state. Putin stated that he informed Lukashenko in details about the special military operation in Donbass and about the course of the negotiation process between Moscow and Kiev. Putin specified 
that Ukraine has departed from the agreements that were reached with Russia in Istanbul. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov stated that Russia sees no reason why Russia can continue the negotiations with Ukraine. I see no reason why we can't continue the negotiations. Even though Ukraine is being slippery all the time and sometimes Ukraine completely rejects what Ukraine proposed recently. We are patient and persistent people, Sergei Lavrov said during an interview to the Russia 2040 channel. Constantin Restsev, special for the Anna News.